Hello, Dr. Carlo Oger. In this video, we're going to talk about the causes of ascites, which are divided into the normal peritoneum causes and abnormal or diseased peritoneum. A normal peritoneum, portal hypertension where serum ascites albumin gradient or SAAG is more than 1.1 grams per deciliter. Hepatic congestion, congestive heart failure, constrictive pericarditis, tricuspid insufficiency, and bot chiari syndrome leads to this kind of ascites. Also, liver disease, which includes cirrhosis, alcoholic hepatitis, fulminant hepatic failure, massive hepatic metastases. In hypoalbuminemia, in which the SAAG is less than 1.1, nephrotic syndrome, protein losing enteropathy, severe malnutrition with anasarcos, which is generalized edema, and other miscellaneous condition which also have an SAAG gradient less than 1.1 which includes chylose ascites, pancreatic bile ascites, nephrogenic ascites, urine, and ovarian disease. In a diseased peritoneum the SAAG ratio is less than 1.1 and includes infections, bacterial peritonitis, tuberculous peritonitis, fungal peritonitis, HIV-associated peritonitis, malignant conditions, that's cancer, peritoneal carcinomatosis, and primary mesothelioma and pseudomyxoma peritoneum. In patients with new onset ascites of unknown origin, peritoneal fluid should be sent for cell count, albumin level, culture, total protein, a gram stain, and a cytology. The inspection of the ascites fluid. Most acidic fluid is transparent and tinged yellow. A minimum of 10,000 red blood cells is required for acidic fluid to appear pink, and more than 20,000 red blood cells will produce distinct blood tinged fluid. This may result from either a traumatic tap or from malignancy. Bloody fluid from a traumatic tap is heterogeneous bloody, and the fluid will clot. Non traumatic fluid is homogeneously red and does not clot because the blood has already clotted and lies. Cloudy acidic fluid with purulent consistency indicates infection. How about the cell count? Normal acidic fluid contains fewer than 500 white cells and fewer than 250 polymorphonuclear leukocytes or PMNs. Any inflammatory condition can cause an elevated white blood cell count in this fluid. A PMN count of greater than 250 cells per microliter is highly suggestive of bacterial peritonitis. In tuberculous peritonitis and peritoneal carcinomatosis, lymphocytes usually predominate this count. How about the SAAG? It's the best single test for classifying ascites into portal hypertensive and non-portal hypertensive causes. Calculated by subtracting the acidic fluid albumin value from the serum albumin value, it correlates directly with the portal pressure. The specimens should be obtained relatively simultaneously. The accuracy of the SAAG results is approximately 97% in classifying ascites. The term high albumin gradient and low albumin gradient should replace the terms transudative and exudative in the description of the ascites. How about the total protein? In the past, acidic fluid has been classified as exudative if the protein level is more than 2.5 grams. However, the accuracy is only approximately 56% for detecting exudative causes. The total protein level may provide additional clues when used with the SAAG. An elevated SAAG and high protein levels are observed in most cases of ascites due to hepatic congestion. The combination of a low SAAG and a high protein level is characteristic of malignant ascites. How about a culture and a gram stain? Culture has a 92% sensitivity for the detection of bacteria in the acidic fluid, provided that samples are inoculated into a blood culture bottle immediately after a collection. In contrast, gram stain is only 10% sensitive for visualizing bacteria in early detected spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Approximately 10,000 bacteria are required for detection by gram stain. The medium concentration of bacteria in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is one organism per ml. How about cytology? 
Cytology smears are reported to be 50% sensitive in the detection of malignant ascites. As you can tell, the diagnosis of the acidic fluid, which will give us the true cause of the fluid inside the abdomen, is complex and will require the doctor to perform many different tests to try to figure this out. Here, I tried to explain best I could some of these tests and how are they interpreted by a physician. I hope this was useful.